And EGAD singles out health and gender-related issues as constituting significant threat to people in refugee camps. Greetings, dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to EBC World with me, Shifa Ralako. Do stay with us. Now, the spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the bilateral agreements reached with South Africa, Angola and Brazil will elevate Ethiopia's current relations with the stated countries. According to the spokesperson, Melles Alam, the cooperation agreements, particularly with South Africa and Brazil, will positively impact Ethiopia's standing in the BRICS. Alam underlined that the Memoranda of Understanding inked during the Ethiopia-Kenya Joint Ministerial Commission meeting serve as an example of the two countries' growing desire to fortify their already strong relations. Regarding that, Alam expressed gratitude for Kenyan government's decision to stop charging Ethiopian nationals for Electronic Travel Authorization ETA. The ambassador clarifies that while Ethiopians won't have to pay for their visas or any other associated fees, they still need to fill out an online electronic travel authorization ETA form before their arrival. The 36th Ethiopia-Kenya Joint Ministerial Commission meeting was held at the Skylight Hotel in Addis Ababa. The GMC, which was co-chaired by Minister of Foreign Affairs Tayyaz Kasselasi and Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs Musalina Mudavadi, deliberated and agreed on the Memoranda of Understanding signed during the meeting. On the agenda were cooperation between the two countries in seven key areas, including culture, tourism, petroleum sector development, wildlife protection and blue economy and fisheries, correctional services and capacity building, calling upon respective parties to duly implement newly inked MOUs in close collaboration. Minister Askasalasi reiterated Ethiopia's continued commitment and efforts to closely working with its southern neighbor for the peace, development and prosperity of the two countries and the Horn of Africa region at large. Have a listen to this successfully concluded the 36 Ethiopia 
Ethiopian Joint Ministerial Commission meeting, which was indeed delayed due to several uh, reasons and circumstances, including the COVID-19 onslaught. We have agreed that the GMC be held on regular basis. Despite the delay in the GMC meeting, we are satisfied with the existing excellent relationship between our two countries at all levels. The GMC meeting was uh, successful as it evaluates the implementation of various agreements signed before, and we are also pleased to announce the signing of a new memorandum of understanding and a number of various uh, sectors. The Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary Mudavadi on his part said the painstaking deliberations at the GMC and senior experts level are testaments to the sort of special relations Kenya and Ethiopia enjoy and will further consolidate bilateral relations. Again, have a listen to this. Our two countries also signed memoranda of understanding to spur our cooperation across additional areas of national development. These include tourism, wildlife, culture, the blue economy, correctional services, petroleum, and capacity building in public service. The relevant entities of our two sides are urged to set the frameworks for the full implementation of these arrangements for the benefit of the peoples of our two countries.
Welcome back. Now let's turn our attention to stories selected for detailed analysis. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development, EGAD, has singled out health and gender-related issues as constituting significant threats to people in refugee camps across the region. Member states thus call for collective efforts to bring about lasting solutions. Alula Teklamare reports. Member states of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development IGAD convene a discussion to resolve growing challenges facing refugees across the region. Performance report of the regional bloc indicates that communicable diseases like TB, HIV and malaria are spreading at an alarming rate, heavily impacting women and children. Speaking at the event, Director General of the Ethiopian Refugees and Returnees Service, Aiba Hassan reiterated Ethiopia's commitment to contribute its fair share in supporting refugees, returnees, and asylum seekers. Let me highlight my country, Ethiopia's remarkable determination and of the generosity, generosity of its people in hosting some one million refugees from neighboring countries. This is a testament to Ethiopia's an unwavering commitment to providing protection and support to those in need. Thanks to this rich cultural diversity and warm hospitality, Ethiopia remains to be a beacon of hope for its neighbors and beyond. Meanwhile, Kenyan National TB Program Manager Dr. Immaculate Kature said refugees deserve to get livable environment citing the necessity of cooperative efforts to ensure the well-being of refugees across the IGAD region. In the region, in the IGAD region, TB and HIV continue to pose a significant public health threat, with most of the countries being high burden for either TB or both TB and HIV. And for TB, it's both the drug-sensitive and the drug-resistant type of TB. Furthermore, South Sudanese Refugees Commission Head of Programs, Malwal Deng, expressed the importance of addressing the root causes of migration. Well, the root causes of migration are all, always known. When people are displaced from a place to another, uh, in our region, most of the causes are conflicts, of course. So we won IGAD with the help of the uh, African Union and then all the related uh, regional organizations to work uh, mainly in the peace so when peace prevails in our member state uh, there will uh, the, the conflict that are facing our uh, region will reduce and therefore the displacement will get less and then we will not have so many refugees in a very crowded places where they can really get uh, all these diseases so the main thing that should be the focus of IGAD and the region is make, uh, bring peace and trying to address the environmental issues because some of the displacement is also uh, caused by the environmental issues like flooding, uh, drought, issues like that. Participants of the event suggest member states to draft a common health policy to be implemented in border areas to help prevent health-related problems. The Secretary General of the Organization of Southern Cooperation says urgent international financial reform is mandatory to ensure fairness and mutual benefit for both creditors and debtor countries. Secretary General Sheikh Mansour bin Musalam asserted that OSC looks forward to working on that regard. Koshum Maliso has more on that from the Ethiopian News Agency. The global financial architecture only protects the needs and interests of creditors. Talking to Ethiopian News Agency Secretary General of Organization of Southern Cooperation said, international financial reform is imperative to promote fairness and mutual benefit of both the creditors and data countries. It is true that the international financial architecture remains creditor-centric. It is only preoccupied by the interests of, uh, of protecting the interests of creditors, but does not take into account the legitimate concerns of debtor countries like ours. He reaffirmed that his organization looks forward to work on it in collaboration with African Union. And from the Organization of Southern Cooperation, we look forward to working with the African Union and the African Union Commission in particular in this regard. 
In November of 2023, our ministers of finance decided to create the common leveraging union of borrowers, the club. And the club acts as the first union of sovereign borrowers, of sovereign debtors, so that we can collectively negotiate uh, debt relief, but also the reform of the international financial architecture. We cannot, whether in Africa, Latin America or Asia, transform that international financial architecture one by one. We need to come together and try to find, with creditors as well, a win-win scenario. The organization of Southern Cooperation supporters, the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, he noted. We share many member states with the African Union, and therefore the continental agenda is one that touches directly our member states where we support them in terms of infrastructure development, because if we want free trade amongst our countries, we need the infrastructure for that integration. Uh, until today, recently I was in the Gambia, and I had to leave to Turkey, so go to Asia, to go back to Gambia from Addis. So I had to leave the African continent to come back to the African continent. We need to invest in the infrastructure to integrate our countries. The OEC works in this. And, and in this regard, uh, we, we, with the African Union Commission, we are ready to support in any manner deemed desirable for our common member states, but also beyond, uh, because we believe that South, 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 South cooperation and African integration mutually reinforce each other. And therefore, we stand ready to contribute to that. And finally, the World Vision has urged donors to join hands to fulfill children's potential in nutrition and food protection. The agency whose intervention in Ethiopia dates back to 1971 with relief efforts made the call while launching its Enough campaign on Wednesday in Addis Ababa to end hunger and malnutrition to address the escalating hunger crisis in Africa. It will commit 1.7 billion U.S. dollars to improve the nutritional status of children living in the most vulnerable communities across 27 African countries in three years. It was uh, disclosed. Shegamato takes it from here. According to a recent UN report, approximately 342 million people on the African continent are severely food insecure, accounting for one third of the globally severely food insecure population, and nearly 148.1 million children under five are affected by stunting globally, with 44.4 million in Africa. The World Vision International launched a enough campaign at Disaba on Wednesday to end hunger and malnutrition to address this escalating hunger crisis in Africa. Launching the Continental Enough Campaign, Minister of Women and Social Affairs, Rugugeta Sfaya loaded World Vision's initiative to remedy hunger and malnutrition crisis and reaffirm the government's commitment to the implementation of the initiative together with other concerned organizations. Recognizing the importance of the campaign in addressing these alarming national and global defects that are treating the well-being of our citizens, I promise to all partners that the government of Ethiopia will engage itself to shoulder all necessary responsibilities for the implementation and successful achievements of this great initiative. As we launch this project as a government of Ethiopia, my ministry and other stakeholders, other government organizations, are looking forward to work on, to work together with World Vision to work on detailed project and identification of interventions and areas of implementation as well. World Vision Ethiopia Country Director Carmen Till for her part underscored that the platform will help to renew efforts to put nutrition and food at the center of the development of children. All the crises around the world, including things that are happening within Ethiopia, are providing impacts that are negatively affecting the lives of children. So we are using this opportunity to invite our partners, our supporters, donors, to create a platform for children to have their voice heard about how we can come together and over the next three years have a really ambitious target around increasing the nourishment of our children and helping them fulfill their full potential through nutrition and food security.
Vice President and Regional Director with the World Business East Africa Regional Office for our part called on partners to work together to join resources and commit together to end child hunger and malnutrition. And whilst we each have our own lane, we must run this race together because we cannot achieve results for children without unity as well as focus on our common purpose. So we'll continue to respond in a way, in a way that ensures quality programs, that ensures accountability for the children and the families that are at the heart of our work. So today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes, we say enough. No child will suffer from hunger if we act now. So let's join hands, let's join resources, and let's also commit together to end child hunger and malnutrition in one de- generation. And now is the time for us to achieve that. On the occasion, ambassadors from different countries, AU representatives, AU delegates to the AU, World Vision Directors of South and West Africa Regionals and Mangazars, reiterated their respective countries and organizations firm belief to the realization of the great campaign. The World Vision Enough campaign, which is part of a global World Vision initiative connected to sustainable development goal, was launched at the margins of the 37th AU summit in Addis Ababa. Well, the viewers, you have been watching EBC World. Now a quick recap of the top stories. Foreign Affairs Ministry dubs bilateral engagements on the margins of the AU summit successful. And EGAD singles out health and gender-related issues as constituting significant threats to people in refugee camps. Well, leave your stats all the news theories for now. Thank you for watching us. Bye-bye.